I was on the um, steering committee, um, I will never get those five years back in my life. Um, <laughs> but it was a long, uh, complicated process where a lot of folks were brought into the uh, conversation. We had a very diverse uh, group of people sitting around the table for literally about five years of, of uh, committee meetings and drafts and rewrites and more drafts and rewrites and community process around uh, finally adopting Plan 2040. And uh, I know that the intention of that plan was to encourage uh, infill development and discourage uh, sprawl with that three-tiered um, um, development plan. I also, and, and I believe in infill development. I believe in maximizing uh, the infrastructure that we've already put in and that we've already paid for uh, as a way to be responsible with taxpayer dollars. Um, but I also know that infill development is tough and it's expensive. And we don't have much uh, of that available except in the most um, complicated and expensive uh, places for building. So one of the unintended consequences, uh, I think, of that strict uh, interpretation of uh, uh, creating a plan around affordable housing, but also trying to prevent sprawl, uh, the unintended consequence we've seen in the county is a tremendous increase in building out in rural lands, uh, which is expensive for those uh, townships. They can't support the infrastructure required for um, kind of scattershot housing. People get out there and they want city services and it's a very rural situation. Um, and it also breaks up contiguous uh, natural land that hasn't been developed yet. Not all land needs to be saved, but some land should be saved for farming, for a future open space. And so I would say that there needs to be serious conversation about what the impact of Plan 2040 and the kind of the tight sense of, of uh, rare annexation is doing. So the county has shored up its regulations to discourage scattershot development of housing, to discourage that high cost of uh, unplanned housing. But that means then that there's more pressure on the city of Lawrence especially to um, determine how in the world it's going to get affordable housing if only the most expensive way of building houses is left with infill development. So I think probably serious consideration of annexation policies um, so that so that new housing is, is possible um, in, in the land contiguous to city boundaries, um, closest to infrastructure that's already, you know, nearby and can be connected to. Um, it's, a, it's a complicated topic, and I know especially for folks in the chamber and the development um, Community, the how you know the realtors and the and the builders, um, it's it's a real point of contention and, it's, and it deserves a real conversation and some, again, ability to uh, change paths if we know that we've uh, that, that we need to um, redirect or kind of uh, think through the consequence of Plan 2040. So because housing is absolutely it's critical to everything we do. It's, it's like the housing first principle is if you can get people under a roof, their own roof with a key that locks their door, if they're having problems, if they have mental health issues, if they have uh, issues with uh, poverty or, or behavioral health problems or, or uh, d disconnect from community, you know, close to homelessness or, or just a growing family that can't quite afford the space they need. If they are able to get into a house uh, or an affordable apartment, then everything uh, begins to go better. All the services they receive are more are are better received. All of the um, points they connect to in the community are more meaningful and successful. So housing is absolutely essential. It should be our first priority because everything follows after that. So I stepped onto the steering committee for Plan 2040 pretty close to the end there uh, with Patrick Kelly moved off and onto the County Commission. And, and then I was chair of the Planning Commission during the time when we worked Plan 2040 through the Planning Commission, which it had to be adopted the same exact document by Planning Commission, City Commission, and County Commission. So that was a very high bar. Uh, the last time we did this 20 years ago, it took six years of that stage, bouncing back and forth between those three commissions, and frankly, we'd already spent enough time on it as a community that we needed to be able to move forward and, and, and correct it as needed. Uh, we needed to have a document. 
so a lot of the choices that I made were to preserve that document as a consensus document from the 10 of us on the Planning Commission with the hopes then that that would give it the strongest chance of being um, uh, passing through the city and county. Uh, the, the part about Plan 2040 that makes me uncomfortable, the part that I knew we didn't get right, was the part about annexation. So we have the three-tiered system where we have we're pushing for infill, which I very much stand behind, and I'll talk more about that in a sec, and then the tier two, which we're expected to grow into that within the next 20 years. What I was looking for was an understanding, specifically from the city commission, that, that we are obligated and required to expand during to, to all of those areas because we need it for the growth of the, of the population that is here because that market rate housing um, is an important piece of affordable housing. So we're, we're, we're squeezing in all directions because our market rate housing is, we're, we're lacking the supply and it's our prices are high for it. Um, one of the unintended consequences of, of the, um, the, the, the the high bar for annexation that ended up in the document was that uh, Baldwin City and Eudora are not bound by that document, and so we're pushing uh, development then into Baldwin and Eudora that don't have some of the same other positive aspects that, that we're looking at in terms of infill. So our sprawl is going to happen from our smaller cities, uh, even though we possibly say that from happening in Lawrence. The, the infill development that we championed in Plan 2040, I think is, is needed and is valuable uh, because we have infrastructure that's already paid for, that, that exists in town, that we can use for, for greater density, but also because infill needs a champion, it's harder to do, it's more expensive, it's trickier, and so we needed a document that said, not, you know, we value that, and we're going to, um, to, to, to help push through some of the barriers that would otherwise be there for, for infill development. Um, one of the other things we've done on a county level, uh, and this was passed through the Planning Commission and uh, County Commission not that long ago, was the new rural zoning regulations. So um, before now, so we've had this, it was too hard to build within the city of Lawrence, and it was too easy to build out in the county. And so we broke up a lot of land that maybe didn't need to, or people who would rather have bought a lot in town couldn't find one that they could afford, but they could find something they could afford in the county, though then they're now pushing for, why don't you pay my road? Why don't you offer services that I would rather have had in town? So we have a disconnect between where we want to see growth and where we were seeing growth. What the rural zoning regulation change did then was, instead of having a map of the rural area where you look at it and say, everything here is ag, what's the problem? was to have a, a different zoning for the rural residential and, and actual ag, so at anything over 20 acres, which is was still agriculture. And so now we have a tool, we have a visual tool, to start seeing the scope of the problem, which frankly, the county commission wasn't really aware of how much we were booming in the county. Um, and when I would try and say t tell that to the uh, folks at planning, they'd say, no, we're not, because we didn't have a tool to evaluate it. So now we have, we have that, we just started having the discussion, and we need to start having a discussion between the city and the county and the planning staff about what we're going to do with annexation because we're, we, we're not done. Okay, so this is going to be one of those issues that I'm going to probably take about two minutes to talk about because I'm, I'm just at the beginning of, you know, talking to people about this, but it's one of the things I think a lot of people find frustrating about government and, like, why is, why is this so difficult to understand? Like. Should there be a, a layman's like user guide for how to understand these things? I think that people deserve, you know, to be able to understand it. That it not be um, so complicated and so confusing that only a handful of people can understand it. So, in the, with the people that I've even met with, like business owners and um, people smarter than me that are doing different things in our community than me, again, they go back to like, what's the plan for? how we can grow. There has to be some kind of way that we can get to yes. And they've, you know, the people that I've talked to have given me, like, here are some of the barriers, like, um, you know, and I, I don't know if this is the place that's appropriate to list those barriers, but there's people that have thoughts about that. So that's my first thing. I think the obvious um, things that I've heard that I can see just, uh, or that it, um, the grow our density, you know, it drives up the cost of real estate more, and that it affects the affordable housing, and that that's something that our community has, you know, worked out a lot, and 
and it's it seems like this plan is disruptive to that. And you know, I have I have adult children that want to live in the community. I want my grandchildren to live here. There's people that are just concerned about like who's going to be able to live here. So, um, I, like I said, I think that you know those are things that need to be looked at, and that everything should be on the table. And I appreciate that it took five or six years. I can't even imagine, and I'm sure it does feel like you, you know, lost a lot of your life. I can imagine. I've worked on things that I feel the same way about. So, um, you know, but just I'm saying humbly that I think that we might have to look at that again because it seems like there's some problems. Thank you. Housing justice is one of the main things that I'd like to focus on on the commission. I largely agree with a lot of what Nancy and Karen have said around our 2040 plan. We need a whole county strategy. So the 2040 plan is an agreement between the Planning Commission, the City of Lawrence, and Douglas County. We have seen increased annexation in Eudora and Baldwin, and increased use of folks moving out into rural areas and not knowing exactly what the difference is between living in a city and living in an unincorporated county area. So this is a moment where we need to have some of that voter education, some of that community education, and make sure that we're reaching folks in the community who traditionally haven't been a part of this process. When we talk about affordable housing, though, we also have to consider discussions around owning and renting. So like Pam had mentioned, I have a lot of friends who are in their early 30s who are looking to become first-time home buyers, who are looking to have larger homes so that their families can expand, and it's pretty tough in Lawrence. I recently just purchased a home that I am in love with and that my partner and I are excited to grow into, but that's hard for many folks who are at a similar stage in their lives as us because of the high cost of housing. And so we have a disproportionate number of renters in our community. Partially that's because of the university and college students, but partially that's because of the cost. And so we really need to think through how do we make sure we have that stable housing base where folks have the opportunity to own and really take ownership of the community and of their home. And so I would like us to consider how are we supporting tenants and how are we thinking about tenants' rights in our community and how are we also making sure that there is affordable housing stock for folks who do want to own and really become a part of our community. So we need to balance out that idea of growth and making sure we have a good mix of housing for folks throughout Douglas County. But think about this as a whole county discussion and an area for whole county education. 